was opportunity here. Now we stand in this moment because of the development that has transpired. One of the highlights of the development on this property, aside from the sanctuary being built and the conference center next door and the banquet facility, is a family movie cineplex, 27,000 square feet, eight cinemas. It was a $2 million build out. It was a collaboration that was done between myself and my friend, Richard Phillips. We had already began to do the work and it was with the passing of the latest legislation with opportunity zone ideas lifted by and championed by our own junior senator that we were able to sharpen our pencils and see a means by which to make the story of resurrection real even in a movie theater that had been abandoned for 14, 14 years. So we welcome you and we thank you for being able to see this great meeting place story, this great story for the city of Columbia. It's a great American story, but all the glory from our perspective belongs to God. In 1870, 1870, that great preacher Reverend Hiram Revell was elected as the first African-American United States Senator. Shortly after that, Blanche Bruce was elected. Then from there, that esteemed brother of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Edward Brook, was elected as U.S. Senator. And it's often said that if we see Father, we see Father because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And we have a senator here in our state, a junior senator who is standing on the shoulders of giants, and we received the benefit of him being able to see opportunities and to champion opportunities. Would you all help me to give a warm welcome to our junior senator, Senator Tim Scott. Well, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing out there? Oh, God, you guys look good. You look good. Particularly you, but you look really good over there. Yeah. <laughs> Leslie Richardson, God bless you. Hi. B Bishop Freeman, thank you so much for your investment of time and energy, but most importantly, your investment from a vision perspective. We were talking about it outside. The good book of Proverbs 29, 18, it says, without a vision, people perish or they cast off restraint. It is wonderful to stand here today in a place where a man with a vision surrendered himself and submitted himself to do great things alongside your lovely bride to make the community, I consider our community, better. Thank you for your leadership. Let's give him a hand, please. Uh, so, so often we have a chance to say uh, a lot about the progress and success of our nation. You look around and you look at the unemployment rate, we're at a historic low. You talk about the economic investment, we're at a historic high. But there uh, is places in our nation where the recovery has been uneven, where folks have felt left behind. And one of the reasons why I designed the Opportunity Zone legislation in the fashion that I did was to look back into those areas who really needed hope, who, who needed help, and who had amazing potential. But the opportunities were not landing close enough to those communities. And so for me, the why behind the Opportunity Zones is more important than the what. Uh, to get to where we want to go in life, sometimes we have to spend a few minutes taking a step back so that we can appreciate the why that motivates us to develop the legislation. And for me, as some have heard before, that for the why for me is as a kid growing up in a single-parent household, mired in poverty, stressed and distressed, uh, feeling hopeless and adrift, I had the good fortune of meeting a small business owner who taught me that all things were possible. 
And for me, those lessons started at a movie theater. And so Bishop Freeman, as you have partnered with Mr. Phillips to open a movie theater, it's just a warm place in my heart for that place where my life started to change because a small business owner who had a little margin in his paycheck and a little margin in his schedule started investing in a little kid like me at 15 years old. And, and thank God he came along. Now, I had a praying mama. Can we th say thank God for some praying mamas out here? I had a praying mama who was working day and night. And, and uh, as uh, I've told the story several times before around South Carolina, I, I unfortunately... Uh, Mr. Vice President, if you can hear me back there, flunked out of high school. <laughs> I apologize to her and to you, sir. And my mother was always the kind of woman who wanted me to shoot for the stars, and if you miss, you'll be a, you know, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you'll be among the stars. Well, the, the, the year I failed out of high school, she took me outside and introduced me to a new form of encouragement. She, she, she showed me a tree. Yeah. <laughs> now, for those of you uh, unfamiliar with the psychology of a switch, I found it that day, and, and soon thereafter, she taught me uh, the power of motivation through the power, Mark, of a switch. Now, I know that my friends in the audience, like Mark, may not be familiar with a switch because they're really good students, but a switch is a southern apparatus of encouragement. <laughs> she warmed me up, and I got my act together and went on and, and did some other things. But, uh, it, it's that kind of a why, though, of being hopeless myself. It's that kind of why of being lost myself. That when I had a chance as a senator to create legislation to hopefully have a positive and powerful impact in places where people like me feel like I did. The opportunity zones to me is that that olive branch of hope. Uh, it, it's that notion that everyone in every place at any time should be blessed with opportunities. I, I am thankful that we were able to get that passed and it's now law. And there was no, <laughs> there was no bigger champion for the Opportunity Zone legislation than my good friend, uh, our nation's Vice President, Mike Pence. I will tell you that I, I first met the vice president before he was a vice president. I met the vice president before he was a governor. I met the vice president early on in his congressional career before I ever made my way to Washington. And the thing I enjoy the most about the vice president is he serves our nation well, but he, he does it as a man of faith. He does it as a, a man with vision. He does it in such a way that we can all be proud of the efforts of our vice president. And I am so thankful to be able to introduce to you uh, a man who needs no introduction but deserves one, and I'm going to give you a short one. When you're a freshman member of Congress and you're trying to find a bathroom, me, and you run into someone who's willing to help you understand the ropes in Washington but also understands and appreciates doing it with integrity and with character, and with competence, and he becomes your friend, and then he rises to the level of being vice president, but he still remembers where he's from, who he loves, and why he serves, we are blessed. Next speaker, our vice president. Please stand and welcome Mike Pence. <laughs> record must have skipped. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for the warm welcome. Please be seated. It is a real joy to be with each and every one of you. Uh, and uh, to Bishop Freeman and uh, all of the wonderful people at the meeting place 
church. He told me 19 years ago he had a Bible and a bar stool and three people, and now you are transforming this community for your members and for everyone in Southeast Columbia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're just so inspired by the example of the Meeting Place Church, and, uh, and uh, I want to thank you all for coming out today. Thanks for coming out and, and, uh, and helping us all collectively celebrate uh, uh, what Columbia and what South Carolina are doing in partnership with local businesses, in partnership with this great ministry, and in partnership with leaders at the state and local level. It's truly inspiring. And I'm here with some of my favorite people, uh, chief among them. It's my wife of 33 years. She's a Marine Corps mom. She's an advocate for uh, military families and spouses all across the nation, and she actually teaches art at a Christian school, Bishop. My wife, Karen Pence, is with us today, the second lady of the United States. She had to be here. And it's also a real joy. I, I, I think you can probably tell from the way we talk about each other, uh, uh, the, the bond that I have come to share uh, with your senator. Uh, I first met him when he was a state legislator, and I had made my way down to South Carolina. Uh, I sensed his quality, I sensed his integrity and his faith from the first time that we spoke. Little did I know that we would serve together in the United States House of Representatives, and, and uh, you can imagine uh, how inspired I was to see him take his role and be re-elected as the junior senator for the great state of South Carolina. Would you stand up and join me in thanking Senator Tim Scott for his presence and his great leadership. I can honestly say I was for Tim Scott before it was cool. <laughs> and I hope you people in South Carolina know that uh, his leadership inspires not only people all across this state, not only in Washington, D.C., but all across the nation. And uh, we're all grateful uh, for your support for him. And as I get started today, speaking of friends of mine, let me bring greetings from another friend of mine. Uh, Senator and I spoke to him on the way here, and he was excited to hear that we were coming to see one of the Opportunity Zones that he signed into law become a reality. I bring a, greetings from a great champion of opportunity for every American, the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. I was excited to be here with you today, and particularly to be here this month, to see the way this community is, is pulling together the extraordinary entrepreneurial energy that's gathered here, the way your political leadership at the national level has rallied around making new opportunities available for people uh, all across northeastern uh, Columbia. Uh, and it's also meaningful to be here uh, in this community, particularly since it's Black History Month. It's a month each and every year where Americans pause to celebrate the extraordinary accomplishments and contributions of African Americans to the life of this nation, from business to the arts to sciences politics to armed forces to law enforcement, every field of endeavor. As President Trump said in issuing his proclamation this year, and I quote, the examples of heroism, patriotism, and enterprise of African Americans throughout our history have given people of all backgrounds courage, confidence, and faith to pursue their dreams. And we celebrate Black History Month with all of you. And in this time, it's incredibly exciting to be here, not only, Bishop, to see the growth in this community, but to see a growing American economy. It's inspiring to think that uh, since Election Day 2016, businesses large and small have created 5.3 million new jobs all across the United States. Wages are rising at a faster pace than any time in decades. They're growing uh, fastest for blue-collar workers across the country. And in this rising economy, in just two years, nearly five million Americans have lifted themselves off food stamps. This economy is growing. And it's a result of the energy of our people. And the policies we've advanced, and South Carolina is no exception to this boom. Uh, South Carolina has added nearly 80,000 jobs over the last two years. And uh, South Carolina is now enjoying the lowest unemployment 
rate in the history of the great state of South Carolina. That is incredible to speak of. But as Senator Scott knows, and I expect many of you appreciate, it's been a result of not of good timing, but it's been a result of good policies from the outset of this administration under President Trump's leadership with your Senator's strong support. We've been cutting taxes, rolling back regulation, unleashing American energy, negotiating uh, better and fairer trade deals, opening up opportunities for American exports as never before. And in the midst of all of those reforms, we passed legislation that included what come, has come to be known as opportunity zones, that's expanding opportunities here in Northeast Columbia and all across America, and Senator Tim Scott was the champion of this transformational reform. It's true. One of the things Senator Scott and I bonded early on is uh, our affinity for a guy by the name of Jack Kemp, who was a mentor of mine. And um, he actually was Secretary of Housing and Urban Development during the first Bush administration. And it was then that he first began to talk about this concept. But, but your senator managed to uh, bring it to the floor of the United States Senate. And when tax reform rolled through the Congress of the United States, historic tax reform, I mean to tell you, he was in there every step of the way, making sure that when tax reform would come, that it would benefit every American and every community. And Senator Tim Scott, this community, this state, and this nation are in your debt. Thank you so much. Opportunity zones, those, those of you not fully aware, areas, uh, are areas of the country that for too long have been left behind. And many of the nearly 35 million Americans who live in these places still struggle to find work, to make ends meet. Uh, Tim and I were talking on the way here at the time that we had both traveled to Philadelphia. We, we were there for a conference. We were both members of Congress. And uh, we were in inner city Philadelphia, so we made a time to stop by a a local ministry, a homeless shelter. And I'll just never forget the conversation that I had with an African-American man about my age. I remember he looked at me and he said, Mike, you know, it's just, uh, it's just not like it was when you and I were growing up. And I said, well, how do you mean? And he just looked, he looked at me and he just said, well, you know, when I was growing up, he said, sure, there were some people that didn't want to work, but you could always find a job if you wanted one. But he looked at me and he said, in 2010, he looked at me and said, there's just no jobs. He said, young people today are faced, faced with a, a lack of opportunity, uh, not a lack of will. And I have to tell you, we, we reflected on that experience and to see the progress that we've been making in our economy broadly, but also in this transformational idea of opportunity zones. It's all about making sure that as the American economy expands, it's going to expand for every American. And that's exactly what we've done here. This program encourages private new investment in areas that start business, rebuild infrastructure, unlock hidden potential. Uh, not like I need to tell the people of this area anything about that because uh, the men and women of this great congregation and businesses in the area have come together for one of the very first opportunity zones to roll out in America since this legislation was signed into law and after 11 years of abandonment, the Capital Eight theater is a reality and it's creating jobs and opportunity and energy in this growing community. I mean, it is amazing to me, Bishop, to think about, uh, think about what you've accomplished here and the leaders of this church saw that potential and saw the opportunity to put people to work, but also to create a magnet, a magnet for more investment in this area, bringing people into the community and, and bringing new businesses into the community and uh, rebuilding it bigger and better than ever before. The truth is Opportunity Zones help address unique needs by forming partnerships between the federal government with regard to tax benefits, state and local leaders, and local investors to create that incentive that, that makes it even more possible for people to invest at the point of the need. As President Trump said just a few months ago when he established what came to be known as the White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council, which is going to be coordinating efforts and identifying opportunity zones all across the country. As the President said, and I quote, no citizen will be forgotten, no community will be ignored, 
No American will be left on the sidelines. We must unlock the potential of all our people, not just some of our people. And that's what Opportunity Zones are doing right here in Columbia. The generosity and the dedication, the ingenuity, the entrepreneurial spirit, not only of Bishop Freeman and this great congregation, but of the businesses that are represented here is truly inspiring. You know, one of my wife Karen's favorite verses is that, uh, that verse that, that speaks about how the Lord says he, he waits in heaven ready to pour out blessings, to pour out blessings on his people until you won't have room enough to take it all in. And I truly do believe looking at what's happening here, looking at this spe spectacular facility and the banquet facility and, and the theaters that have come together and looking at the businesses that are coming back to this region, that those blessings have just begun, just begun for Northeast Columbia. And the truth is, after, after years of, uh, of a neighborhood that's been struggling, and because of the vision that Senator Scott brought here, because of the ingenuity and determination of this great community, you're all coming back. But I know there's one other reason and that I leave here with a tremendous amount of confidence and enthusiasm about what I've seen, and that's... It's because not only do you have the, uh, the business acumen to, to bring this region of Northeast Columbia back, not only do you have public officials that understand how to create incentives that will create jobs and opportunities for every American in every community, not only do you have the strong public support, but also it's evident to me everywhere I've gone since I arrived here at this place is, is the faith of the people of this community. Um, it radiates from everybody I've spoken to, and it's deeply inspiring. And the truth is, you know, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. <laughs> and I know that you all are building on a foundation of faith here. And it's on that foundation that throughout our nation's history, it's always been on that solid foundation that we've been able to bring people together, to bring people together around the point of the need uh, to ensure that opportunities and blessings reach everyone in our community. And so I want to thank you for your inspiring example. Uh, Bishop Freeman, I want to thank you for your warm hospitality today and, and for the inspirational example of the Meeting Place Church. Senator Scott, I want to thank you for your tenacious advocacy of Opportunity Zones as we debated tax reform just a few years ago. And uh, lastly, I just want to thank all of you uh, here across the Columbia community and across South Carolina who are gathered here to really celebrate what is uh, uh, great, great progress, but I think it's just the beginning. So I really do believe that with the strong leadership of President Trump, Senator Scott, your other representatives in both parties in Washington, D.C., championing policies that create opportunities for all with your strong state and local leadership, with this great business community with such large hearts and generous spirits and with a community of faith and with God's help. The best days for Northeast, Columbia, for South Carolina, and America are yet to come. And there'll be days of opportunity for all. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless America.